Assalamu alaikum and welcome to your online library English class. So this was meant to be the first week back from the holidays, so I still have the holiday reading um, board up. Remember I asked everyone to read something every day, whether it's a book or a magazine or a newspaper article or online reading. I hope you've managed to find a way to keep reading. And unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to do um, book borrowing from the library and returning. The circulation has to stop right now while we stay home and stay safe. So I hope you can find ways to keep up your reading. And I will try to find some good websites where you can read online or download um, ebooks to read. So stay tuned. I will be sharing any resources that I find. So today I'm going to read a story to you. It's actually one of the new books that just arrived from Scholastic. It's called The Wonderful Wisdom of Ants. And it's written by Philip Bunting. It's actually got a lot of information. So it's a mix of fiction and non-fiction. It's a story, it's funny, but it gives us facts about ants. And I know ants are a big, big problem sometimes. We have lots of ants. I don't know about you, but at my house, especially in the kitchen, it's hard to keep all the ants away. So even on the inside cover, it shows an ant. Actual size, I guess. Have any of you been out into the jungle here? especially at Tasik Lama or even bigger ones in Temburong and you see the really, really big, big, big jungle ants, they're pretty cool. So let's see the wonderful wisdom of ants. Hey, this is an ant. And this is an ant, 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 and so on. But it is showing us how ants can carry really big things, which is true. That's a lot of ants. In fact, there are 10 quadrillion. That's a big number. So 10, and then how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So million is six, billion is nine. Oh, sorry, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 zeros of these little girls and guys on our planet, roughly. If you weighed all of those ants, they would weigh the same as all of the humans in the world. So here's all the ants. Hold still, all the humans, roughly. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? We're so huge compared to ants, but there's so many of them that they weigh the same as us. Ants love family, micro naps, recycling, helping others. You're welcome, thanks. Being caught on camera carrying stuff way bigger than they are. Ants do not love kettles, boots, magnifying glasses, anteaters, obviously, and the cold. So these are things that can kill ants. If they crawl into a kettle and it's boiling, bye-bye. Just as we live in groups like families, schools, or cities, ants exist as part of their colony. They rely on other ants to gather food, build the nest, and raise the next generation of baby ants. In turn, each little ant does their best for those around them rather than for themselves. All ant colonies start with one queen to be, oh, who takes her nuptial flight and then finds a nice spot to lay some tiny ant eggs. These eggs quickly develop into larvae, which soon grow to become pupae. And before you can say Bob's your aunt, a new colony has begun. Colonies can be tiny like our villages or huge 
like our cities. But unlike our communities, all the ants in a colony are one big family. Because remember, they started from the one queen. So they're all her eggs. So everyone in her colony, she's actually the mother. So that's a neat look underground on how an ant colony works. From the moment they hatch, each ant knows its job and is perfectly suited to its role in the colony. A queen is a female, founds the colony, lays eggs, lays eggs, lays eggs. That's all she does. A worker is a female. She finds food, maintains the nest, cares for baby ants, but lays no eggs. A soldier is also female. She protects the colony, expands the nest, finds food, lays no eggs. There's a princess, a female. She's the queen in waiting. She mates with the drone, founds a new colony, and lays eggs. So she goes to make a new colony. The males are drones. They do no housework. They take to the sky, they reproduce, and they drop dead. Male ants, you don't have much choice for your future. Living in such large families means that ants are naturally social little creatures. Their ability to get along and work with one another is the ant's superpower and allows them to do some wonderful things. For example, weaver ants hang on to one another to build live bridges so that others from their colony can cross from one tree to another. To be able to do things like this, ants have developed their own special way of communicating. So look at that, they build what they call a live bridge. So they actually can use their own bodies and other ants walk across. But unlike we noisy humans, ants don't use sound to communicate. They chat through an odorous alphabet of smells. The letters of their aromatic ABCs are called pheromones. Scatter, scatter, here comes an anteater. Quick, I found a patch of sprinkles. I had baked beans for breakfast. So they leave a trail of smells for their other ants in their colony to follow. So here's how ants use pheromones to make the most of that patch of sprinkles. So imagine they find oh, some delicious sprinkles, maybe from a donut or for some ice cream. So the worker returns back and it leaves the trail saying, sprinkles, 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 sprinkles. So the first worker tells those other workers and they follow her. And then finally they all go and they bring one back and have a sprinkle party. But despite their unambiguous fondness for sprinkles, ants are not fussy eaters. Most species are om nom 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 omnivorous. So, omnivorous for short, which means they will eat pretty much anything they can lay their mandibles on. Which I think I agree with. Ants, as long as there's food, you're going to find ants. As they go about their day, ants recycle the nutrients of plants and trees to create richer soil, which benefits all life on Earth. To ants, helping out the planet comes naturally and they don't need fancy colored bins to help them do it. So as they eat things, it gets recycled back into the earth and the soil is more nutritious. Okay, so ants may not make the world go round, but they certainly make it a better place for the rest of us. We can learn a lot from these marvelous little creatures. So ants teach us to love your family, to reuse and recycle everything, waste nothing, to have a power nap whenever possible. I love power naps. And to always do your best for those around you. And if you can do all of these things, just like our six-legged friends, you will leave the earth in better shape than it was when you got here. Just like the ants. And...
it says non-existent, which means he died, poor little ant. And at the back, it's a recycling sign with ants. So this is going to be available to borrow in the library when school reopens, when you're able to come. I hope you liked it. If you have any comments, write it below. And I miss you guys, and I hope you're getting lots of reading done. Until I see you next week, salam alaikum.